Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, welcome, everybody. It is Thursday, June 14th, and you are staring at my page here in my uh, life stationary notebook. It's a pistachio grid line notebook. There's my Waterman style art. And today we are going to be taking a look at the Browse Calligraphy notebook here which is a practice book. And you might recognize this if you are an Ink Flight subscriber. I won't say why, because maybe some people might not have gotten their Ink Flight subscription yet, but this might be familiar to some of you. So I'm kind of doing this, this is a little bit rough for me. It's the first time that we're trying something like this. And it's a little bit cumbersome trying to move and get things done around here. So if, uh, if you're joining us, would love to see where you guys are from. If you've gotten the Ink Flight box yet, if you enjoy the Ink Flight box, and if you have your course material handy, which is this handy dandy calligraphy notebook. It's got a little cute bird on the cover. Very nice cursive copper plate B. It's made by Browse, which is uh, German, and uh, has German and English translations in here. And I'm shooting this from inside my light box. And uh, like I had alluded to in the uh, description of our ink flight, we were going to take a nice little look at this book and go page by page. So, yeah, I'm your host tonight, Tom, with Ink Journal, inkjournal.com, Ink Flights, going out every single month. And this is our course, the Calligraphon course. A little play on words. You know I'm very big on play of words. I love it. So, today, what you would need, and I'm going to just kind of get to the point, even though I have one person in here, I don't know who it is, so say hello, you know. If you're live, go to the chat. Uh, if the chat is working, I think it is. Yeah, I think chat is working. So, you know, say hello. You know, say if, uh, if something confuses or befuddles you or you don't understand anything that uh, comes out of my mouth here or that you see on my nib, you know, feel free to uh, ask any questions that you may have. And uh, what we have here today was we're going to do... Uh, copper plate. Hey, Catherine from Vermont. On the same time zone as me, so it's uh, it's just getting about to nine o'clock. I got the kitties are put to bed, so I'm I'm sitting here at my desk here and I'm gonna be uh, you know recording away for a little bit here. So it's, it's fun to be able to sit down and uh, relax a little bit with some writing. So um, what you would need. Uh, essentially, if you're watching this live or if you're watching this as a replay, uh, what you want to grab is uh, this book, of course, this, uh, uh, this, this practice book. Or if you don't have it, you could always go with uh, uh, a lined journal or, let's say, a French ruling Claire Fontaine journal. Hey, Michael. What's up, buddy? Fellow New Jerseyan. Uh, so, you know, if you have this out, this is great. If you have uh, French ruling, you could also play along at home as well, or if you just have a normal uh, ruled notebook. And what you would definitely want to do as well is to get something that has a, um, a flexible tip. Uh, so right here, uh, the handy book here says that you could go with these types of dip nibs, but I'm not going that route because then that would require me having to dip over and over again just to do the letters. I mean, you can go that route if you wanted to, but I would rather have my pen, which this is a vintage uh, Waterman Stalwart, 352 Stalwart, approximately, you know, 1950s, 1960s. So this guy is, uh, is old, but is awesome because I love these uh, vintage uh, flexible nibs, even though this is like kind of semi-flexible, still is a wonderful nib to write with. It's got plenty of snapback and uh, a good pliable flexibility to the nib. So it gives me good uh, it gives me good line variation and then also comes to a fine point, which is important when you're doing something like this because you want to get the nice fineness around 
where the the wispiness of the letters are and then you want to get a a thicker stroke when you're doing the downstroke there so uh you know other watermans are perfect for this other vintage conklins uh some pelicans also have a nice uh you know bounciness to them as well uh you could even go with let's say the the fountain pen revolution the um, the, uh, their, their steel nib is pretty good. Some noodlers, if you modify them correctly, will work out pretty well, nicely for you as well. So something with like a pointed nib that has a flexibility to it, it's going to be good for copper plate because then you could get the line variation that you see here. So that's where they say the beauty of this lettering is that the different thicknesses and thinness of the stroke. So if you're able to kind of just master just that ability to vary your stroke, yeah, it just makes your handwriting look so much nicer just to begin with. So, no, you know, not even taking into consideration proportions and, you know, ascenders and descenders and all that crazy stuff. If you could just kind of just add a little extra flair to your writing by applying pressure in the right spots, then you're you're already ahead of the game. So this uh, this is the this is the, so they start off capital lowercase. They go from A to Z. Uh, on each of the pages here and they show you the stroke by stroke so they say okay well this is what you're supposed to accomplish first so you could even go as far as to start that off with and what you want to do when it comes to the um, flexible nibs is that it's a very important to kind of note and I we did do a video on this already with the uh, fountain pen revolution uh, flex nib pen is to is to be aware of the way that you're flexing the pen because it's best if you're able to flex the pen with both tines equally on the paper at the same time, not kind of rolled over to one side or the other. So if so, if you're putting an, an equally applied pressure on the tine, you're going to get a uh, an even dispersion of the ink, and you're also going to split the tines in a way that will allow for it not to, you know, miss as far as the uh as far as the the railroading or just even just kind of bending the tine out of shape you don't want to do that so um it's a little bit difficult not gonna lie a little bit difficult with how i've got the camera here and i'm trying to you know keep an eye on that but i'm going to try to show you what i mean just bear with me a second here all right so so we just follow along with that. And I'm see I'm putting pressure here that I'm letting up. Letting up. And then we're gonna come down and put pressure on it coming down. And then as I'm letting up, I'm also letting up on the pressure. Since I'm coming up, I'm just letting up on the pressure. So not you know, not giving it any sort of because this this pen will work just gently stroking against the paper and I get like a little fine line. It's not gonna miss it. But if I if I put more pressure on it, it's going to respond and give me a thicker line. So that's something just always to be conscious of when it comes to doing flex, is that when you're putting pressure, getting a thicker line. When I'm letting up, especially on the upstroke, getting a thinner line. So then I do a little cross crossbar there. I'm showing this to you pretty up close, and I am putting quite a bit of ink on this here, so you're gonna see some you know feathering that's on there, but that's okay. So we're not looking for perfect right now. We're just looking for practice. And what this is about is just repetition. So even even you can see like you they have the completion of the stroke and then they let you do like they kind of like have a, a like a, a faint a faint version of it here so that you could try to just kind of go on your own. And at a certain point, it's going to be about muscle memory. So you're going to want to remember, you know, the angle that you're flexing at and the the proportion of everything that's and and it, and two is that handwriting is very personal. So even if you don't get it exactly right, it could be kind of like your own A. Make it your own A. kind of looks like a uh, like a surly octopus with tentacles kind of ready to do participate in fisticuffs
So I need a swirl. Uh, coming down the downstroke on the swirl, pressing. Coming up, no pressure. Coming down, pressure. Coming up, and then cross. Easy peasy, right? So, like I said, repetition. I mean, I know we're, I'm not going all the way across here, but you get the idea. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna spend too much time on each letter. I figure we can move on, right? Looks pretty good. How is, how, you know, let me know, chime in. If, if you think that uh, what you're doing is, is looking good, if you're having any hangups or any trouble with anything, you know, related to that, or uh, you just don't get what I'm saying here, you know, just, you know, feel free to chime in. But, um, you know, this is just kind of, this is a relatively new concept for me to be able to do this. So it's not, I'm not used to watching it, having people watch while I'm like writing and stuff like that. So feel free to chime in with your thoughts. Now, see, I'm kind of getting this a little bit at a weird angle. It's better if I could just be able to pull it straight down to get that flex. Ah, uh, see. I gotta do at least one more because that one did not do well for me. All right. Okay. So also other ways of doing A's. I mean, this is the the copper plate way, but sometimes what I like to do is I like to vary things up a little bit. And it, and you can also do this when you let's say you could look at a particular font face that you like, or um, you know somebody who's writing a certain script on Instagram or things like that. So uh, sometimes I like to do like a nice cursive A like this, like a big capital A like that, or like sometimes like this. That's kind of like a cool A. Um, ink on this, by the way, is uh, P.W. Ackerman Trevis Turquoise, if anybody's interested. It is uh, ink of the day number 14 for uh, June. 30 inks, 30 days. And so we got the little A's here. Yeah, tackle this. Yeah, so they give you the, the stroke. I mean, this is a fairly simple one, I guess, so they don't really give it a stroke by stroke. This is where it comes in handy to get a really fine, super fine, flexible nib because you're dealing with a small little area. So when you're curving around, you're kind of making like a circle and then you're putting a stroke down. So really there's like a little bit of a, there's a little bit of flex coming around the, the front part of the, the curve. And then there's the flex to make the back part of it. This is typically how I like to make my A's as well. It reads, ah, ah like a relaxing sigh of relief. Ah. Like all the things that you're doing while you're writing are just unbelievably relaxing. And I realized, and I thought about this a little too late Actually, I may start it up, though. But I was considering putting on some relaxing music in the background. But I'm not quite sure if YouTube, if they hear copyrighted music, like if I say I put on like Mozart or something in the background or just some random piano stuff, that if they would consider that like copyright infringement because it's on a video and then they would completely block out the sound entirely of the video, that would kind of not that would kind of be counterproductive. <laughs> so, um, but I don't know. I might try it. Good turn on. I turn on the computer here. I got my computer next to me, so you're going to hear the, the Mac ding. There you go. Also, another concern. I'm on my uh, home Wi-Fi, so if I stream music at the same time as broadcasting this live, 
may take some precedence away from my live stream and then may have some issues with the uh, with the quality so but we'll see so the capital B is definitely like a complex letter and this is someone that I tend to screw up as well like I have my, my own way of doing B's so when I look at this it looks very intimidating to me I'm not gonna lie when I see like more than three strokes to a letter I'm just kind of like ooh, that's a little it's a little much especially when I don't know you know how everything looks when it gets put together so this is why it's really helpful with how they have the stroke by stroke that I could kind of go back in and say okay well I had to do the back part first and then loop it around then I do that big curly cue to make the front part of it and then that's it it's not three strokes I thought it was three for some reason um, let's see I'm just getting the music queued up here all right so then we got this part. So this part involves, you have a little bit of a curly cue, so you have the flex and then it comes in and then flex and then flex down and then coming up for a little curl like that. So then we have a little spit curl in the front, flex down, let up, turn, then you have the curl. Oh, and I kind of didn't go quite as far enough down as I should have there. Now here's where the uh, rubber hits the road, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Trying to get this right. Uh, and you know what? I didn't do this front part first. Oops. Kind of looks a little bit like a mess because I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Now see, I'm doing it. I'm doing it wrong ways. I'm thinking of doing the front part first because you know what? I usually like doing. I like doing my bees like this. I'll show you. I like those bees. Kind of like a big loopy bee. And I know this is not the copper plate bee, but this is the way that I usually like doing them. Simple. Um, bear with me just a second here. Just putting on. All right, so let's. Let's try some more of them here, because this is obviously something that's a little bit difficult for me. So let me try doing it the real, the real deal way here. I got this, and then we got this part. That's not bad. Kind of looks like a weird, like mantis shrimp or praying mantis or something. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of it, just truth to be told. That looks a little bit better. I still kind of get the vibe that this looks like it's got like antenna or something like that. I hope that you're appreciating the, uh, or at least that you're finding the, the commentary to be amusing here. Not that I'm trying very hard at the whole commentary thing, but I'm just finding myself very, like, I don't know, reaching for words, I guess, is the right word for it. You know what, that's got to come around a little bit more like that. And that's got to come around like that more. Yeah. So let me try the bottom row here. Let's see this here. Okay. I will be the first to admit I am no Michael Sull, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just trying my best. And I think that's the that's the name of the game here. Is just to try, practice a little bit, you know, kind of uh, start to attain that muscle memory. 
kind of feeling where the letters are supposed to end up. And heck, you know, it's just fun just to put some ink on paper. You know, it's kind of it's kind of relaxing just to that's all you have to do is just worry about where this letter is forming and where the ink is going and the shapes that you're making with it. So there's really nothing else that is in my mind right now other than maybe putting on some like peaceful piano or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, so I put on a little bit of like some piano music there. Hope it doesn't put you to sleep. Oh, I was way too close there. Let me just do one like really good one. I just want to get to doing like one solid B. That's not right. It's pretty good. I think it just could like use a little bit there. Now see, like it's a little bit larger in this section than it is like over here, but I kind of felt like I had to do that just because of the fact that the ink is kind of a little bit broader and my my nib is also expanding out to being a little bit broader too. So like when I'm when I'm putting pressure on it, I just kind of have to make a a little bit more of a allotment for space. So I'm I'm kind of happy with that one. What do you guys think? You think it's pretty decent? I think it's okay. All right, we can move on to the little case B's. Small case. Lowercase. So pretty simple, very straightforward. Uh, you know, you're a very typical type of uh, lowercase b. And you can see, like, it's it's very tight. And the way that I'm going over it with my nib and the way that it's opening up and flexing, it's making it very difficult to, uh, and I, I need to kind of make it spread out just a little bit more. So on the upstroke, no pressure. Coming up, coming down, pressure. Up, no pressure. And then the little cue, with the little curl at the end. Up, no pressure. Down, pressure. Up, curl. Very similar to how an L is, except for that little kink at the end. Now bees, I could do all. I could do lowercase bees. These guys are, these guys are nice. I like doing bees. Very simple. Kind of like your L, but just with that little, that little thing at the end there. You can tell I'm very technical about the way that I talk about my lettering. <laughs> This is a good exercise, I think, just in general for kind of getting a feel for flex, too. It's making like a nice lowercase b or just L's. This is a very simple motion. Involves a lot of what, it, it, like a lot of the complex motions that would require you to flex in multiple places during a letter, like that capital B does is very simplified in just doing a simple up, no no flex, down flex, up, no flex, that sort of rhythm you can really get into and, and, and kind of warm up and get feel like you've gotten yourself into a good flow with it. All right, so we got, we got A and B there. 
All right, so we got some bleed through on this side of the page, but we can still see through that. Just trying to move everything over. I'm doing this in a light box, a uh, Foldio light box to be specific. It's a nice little easy does it solution there. Pops up when you need it, fold it away when you don't. It provides pretty decent light. So I'm just trying to get that for you here. Get the C going here. Hold on. All right, I tried folding it. Did not work. I figured we'd just get through the letter C. We could do that. So letter C's got a few different flex points on it here. You can see we've got the we've got the start. The start of it is very light not any pressure at all but then once you come down to the this side here then you're putting pressure and you come up and a little bit of pressure and then a hook around so no pressure coming around down pressure up no pressure down No pressure, and coming down with pressure. Up, no pressure, down pressure. Now it's like, all right, let's see if I'm gonna be able to get this right. Yeah, not quite. It's pretty close. And I encourage you guys to go slow, slow as you want to go, because it's difficult to it like it's it's kind of like a you know, it's like it's like you don't want to put the cart before the horse here. You need to get the technique down and then you could start speeding along as you please, but you gotta get it, you gotta get it down right first. And plus it's also very calming to kind of do this in a slow way anyway. I'm liking that C. I like the C. Even though it's, mm, it's a little tight towards the top how I'm doing them there. Should open it up a little bit more. And then the bottom doesn't quite, bottom should come around a little bit more. Maybe like that. Just trying to get like a good angle where you can watch, but at the same time, I'm not trying to be able to write at the same time is a little difficult. I'll get this down pat. All right. It's not focusing in on the right angle. Sorry, it's just not, it's not focusing for me here. There we go. Maybe that'll work. Okay. And what's the cool thing that you could do when it comes to something like this is, you know, with people being able to follow on, along on Instagram, the uh, 
folks that really have beautiful handwriting and then they do videos is that you could watch them as they go through these motions and be able to kind of mimic and look at how they stroke the pen and how they flex with it and emulate that yourself so that you'd be able to you know come up with come up with either with copy or or just or just you know come with your own version that you could do of a of a particular letter form I'm liking these C's. The C's kind of feel very flowing and, you know, it's just, just fun to write with here. And you have your lowercase C, which is pretty straightforward. Just have a little hook at the end, flex on the downstroke, and then it comes up. C is for cookie. And C is for calligraphon or calligraphy. And it might be essential to just dig in that little bit for that first part of the C just to get the ink flow to make that little dot and to have it distinguished from the rest of the C. Just to get it started. So you're flexing on that downstroke and it's coming up. Now I'm getting some Spotify ads that are ruining the vibe right now. <laughs> I'm refusing to pay for the premium version. Actually, my wife has the premium version. She loves it. I don't want to join on it though because she's got a whole bunch of music that I don't like to listen to so I'm not going to bum off of that. I don't want to mess up our playlists and whatnot. So they recommend all that stuff for you. If you listen to certain things they're going to be playing one thing or another. I didn't like that C. That, that C looks like an E. They're starting to look like E's. That's not good. the ads all right so I think that'll be it for today get through a B and C that was the copper plate so we've got at least through capital A, capital B, capital C, and lowercase versions of that as well. And uh, I just wanted to recap with you guys. Maybe show you a little something here. I got, uh, I was doing some sketches and uh, I was doing one of the, the Inktopus. You might recognize the Inktopus possibly from the, uh, the sticker of which that might have been sent in some packages and whatnot. So um, this, uh, this is a sketch of a little illustration I was putting together for that. Um, this is the Life uh, Pistachio Grid Notebook. So this was a Calligraphon 101 copper plate. If you all have any questions, you could send them to info at auto ink.com that is my email address and if you uh, are interested and you come across this uh, and you don't know about our ink flights and all the fun that we have uh, with sampling pens and inks uh, you could check that out at ink journal dot com just like the name of the channel here which is ink journal ink journal dot com is where it's at for uh, your pen and ink fix. And if you are a uh, an avid enthusiast of fountain pen inks and cataloging your inks and having a lot of inky fun and enjoying all the different colors that fountain pen ink has to offer, 
then you should definitely check us out on the interwebs there. So appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and hanging out with me live here and uh, going through our first uh, phase of, of, you know, our calligraphy workshop. Uh, and I'd love to hear your feedback, so please leave them in the comments below. And, uh, and I do hope to do this again. I don't have a set schedule for it, so I might pop on again at a, another time around like 9 o'clock or so and just, you know, do this for another half an hour and get through a few more letters and just work our way through uh, the whole entire book. So, you know, we have, we have quite a bit of uh, that's to go. We have the rest of copper plate, and we also have uh, an italic uh, type uh, handwriting as well. So, um, and that we could do with a stub nib or an italic nib. So uh, that'll be another interesting little uh, foray and explanation about nibs and fountain pen nibs and whatnot. So um, I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out and uh, hope you have a great night. Take care, guys.